Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am here today to make some Hamilton inspired note cards. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you've been around my channel very long, you probably already know that I am a big fan of the Hamilton musical. I have seen it live, I have watched it multiple times on Disney, and I can pretty much sing along to the entire soundtrack. At the end of last month when I did the regular show us your sheet load feature, which I share viewer cards and happy mail, you might have already seen that I had an awesome subscriber gift me with the Hamilton inspired stamp sets from Ink Road Stamps. It left me speechless. I almost cried. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it in the description box below. And I think you can tell as I was doing my voiceover, I was still just kind of rattled, but in a good way that I had these. I thought I would stop by today, ink these stamps up, and just show you three quick cards. I do hope to be back later in the month where I want to do some personalized note cards for myself. I'll go ahead and talk about most of the products that I'll be using in today's cards, but if I add anything later on, I will be sure to let you know. If I leave you with any questions, just put those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I will of course be using both of the stamp sets from Ink Road Stamps. The one with the silhouettes is called Work, and the one with the sentiments is called The Narrative. If you're a Hamilton fan, you probably know what both of those mean. Currently, both of these sets are sold out, and I'm trying to confirm whether or not they'll be back in stock. But if you go to the website, there is a place that you can put these on your wish list or put in your email address to get notification when they are back in stock. I did want to interrupt this video with a little quick update. I was able to email the owner of Ink Road Stamps to find out about these sets and she thought that they would be available again for pre-order starting today, Wednesday, March 10th. But as of me doing this voiceover on the evening of Wednesday, March 10th, they aren't yet available for pre-order, but you can add them to your wish list. I guess there isn't an email option, but you could keep checking back. Once again, I do have each of these stamp sets linked in the description box below if you want to go ahead and bookmark those and keep checking back. For my cardstock for the focal point, I wanted to try to find a gold colored paper that matched as closely as possible most of the posters and stuff for Hamilton. It's kind of like a gold parchment-y background and then they usually have the icons and the text in black. So I got out a scrap of prickly pear cardstock that I had from Gina K Designs and I cut out as many three by four and a quarter inch pieces that I could. And I ended up getting three, so that's why we'll be making three cards today. To get more of the parchment-y feel and add some texture to those pieces, I also got out my Gina K Designs prickly pear ink pad. For the silhouettes and the text, I grabbed my Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing the stamping first because I want these images to have a little bit of extra time to dry before I do the ink blending. For the first card, I'm going to be using the Skylar Sisters where they are holding their hands and the sentiment that says, you walked in and my heart went boom. Hopefully my husband is not watching this video because this will probably be our next anniversary card to him. So I get those set up in my Misty because I know that these are new stamps and my Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad is not very juicy. So I know I'm going to have to stamp it a few times. And when I use the Misty, I can ensure that it's going to stamp in the same spot every time. As long as you know that magnet stays where it should be. I do end up inking this up and stamping it three times until I get a nice solid black. 
for the next card, I chose the Sons of Liberty and the sentiment that says, awesome, wow. Now I know that the king says this, but I thought it was a fun image to go with that sentiment. Once again, I do ink this up and stamp it three times. For the final card, I chose the Alexander Hamilton logo with Alexander on top of the star, and the sentiment I used for this was Rise Up. Once I did have all three of these stamped, I set them to the side for probably 10 minutes and let them dry well before moving on to the next step. Once those had had some extra time to dry, I then got out my ink and my blending brush to do the ink blending. I am protecting my work surface here with just a cheap cutting mat from the Dollar Tree, and I just start with my blending brush and blend in circles, starting at the edge of the card and go in just a little bit. This gives me a nice shading around the outside edge and just adds a little something extra and some texture to these little cards. Here I will hold up both of them so you can see the difference. While I finish the ink blending on these cards, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Today I would like to know, how often do you ink blend? And what tool or tools do you use when blending? Do you use the makeup or blending brushes like I'm using today? Or do you use the Velcro backed foam pieces with the little wooden handle? I would love for you to leave your answer in the comment section below, and if you do, please make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and want me to see your answer. I myself am getting more and more into ink blending. I haven't done it a whole lot up until recently, but I do love the look. I mostly use the makeup brushes that you see here on screen. I tried it at first with the Velcro foam flat pieces, but I never really liked the look I got. Now, I would like to maybe try those rounded topped foams that I think maybe you get at scrapbook.com. Off screen, I cut and pre-scored three card bases, and these are an off-white. When I first put the little cards up to these, I thought it looked pretty plain, so I decided to bring in my Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder, and I will be embossing the card fronts. Because of that score line, it's really easy to just put this into the embossing folder, and then I line that line up with the edge of the embossed area in the folder. If you are going to give this a try, make sure to hold that embossing sandwich tightly until it is in your machine and rolling through. That way it won't slip in there. I do want to show you a close up at the difference between the two and especially with that card on it. I really just like again that extra added dimension and texture that the embossing gives it. I lined up the remaining two card fronts in the embossing folders and ran both of those through my cuddle bug. Since I had already put the score line in the card fronts, it was simple to just go ahead and fold those in half with that embossing on the front. To reinforce the fold, I did go ahead and bring in my bone folder, and you'll notice that I did the bone folder on the back of the card, and that was just so if it was going to flatten any of the embossing texture, that it would be the little dots that kind of hung over on the back side of the card base. Now that all of the pieces were ready, I could start getting these cards put together. The first thing I did was mat each of the three stamped and ink blended pieces with the black cardstock mat. Once I had all of those in place, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the three quarters of an inch width, and I placed three strips of this onto the back of each of those cards. Since it is a pretty clean and simple card, and there's not a lot of dimension, I decided that I would pop these up off the card front. Now, the one thing I love about this blue tape is, as long as you burnish that blue release paper, it is really pretty easy to get that to come off the back. And another great thing, it doesn't gum up your scissors. Once that foam tape was on the back, I centered each of my cards onto the card fronts, and here's a look at the finished set. I 
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's little trio of Hamilton inspired cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.